Welcome back, fifth grade. Last time what we did was we created our Egyptian cartouche out of air dry clay. You should be receiving yours back today and it should be completely dry. Um, you definitely want to take care of it. Please don't press on it or try to break it because I don't have enough clay for everyone to try again. So this is your friend, not your foe. Be nice to your cartouche. Like I promised, today's gonna be the day where you get to create your cartouche painting. So you're gonna need a few things. You're going to need a placemat. This is so that your table doesn't get dirty. Um, you'll eventually need an ice tray. I know that seems kind of weird, an ice tray. You'll need one of these. And then you will also need some water for switching colors with your paintbrush. So before we get started, I want you to try to think of three different colors that you might use for your cartouche. We're only gonna be able to use three different colors at a time, just because I don't wanna waste paint. And I wanna make sure that you have at least three colors that express yourself. So try to think of three colors that express you. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my brush, and I'm gonna go ahead and start with the red. I just need a little bit. That's why I only give you just a tiny bit of paint because you do not need the whole thing. If you would like to partner up with someone, that is totally fine. That way we don't waste the paint either. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some red to my cartouche. I'm only painting the front. You do not have to paint the back. You are only painting the side that has the hieroglyphics written. So now I'm finished with everything that I wanted red. It's time for me to clean my brush. I'll need to go find a paper towel, which you can find by the sink. I'm gonna go ahead and give my brush a bath. I'm gonna swirl him around very gently and make sure that his hair gets wet. And then I'm going to dry him off with the paper towel and I'm ready for my next color. My next color is going to be gold. Now our hieroglyphics might be really small, so you want to take your time, go neatly, just like an artist, and go over your symbols. Alright, so now we need to do a little bit of problem solving. I want you to notice that I painted red, and then I painted some gold on my symbols, but there is this kind of annoying little white line that separates my gold and my red. Do you see that? It's like a little white valley that separates my letters and then the top of my cartouche. The best way to fix this is with black paint. I'm gonna show you how I would do it. So what I'm doing now behind the camera is I'm dipping into the black paint and I'm going very, 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 very gently. I want you to see this right up close. And I'm going to try it and go ahead and fix those areas very, very, very gently. Sometimes if you can't fix something, you gotta fill it with some paint. So I'm gonna go over and really gotta get my brush in between those valleys, those little edges that are white where the paint can't get in. And I'm just gonna get nosy and get my paintbrush in there. Now you could do this with any color. I wanted to do it with black so that it would make my symbols really bold. All right, I went ahead and went over my hieroglyphics around with some black paint that made it look a little bit neater. You can do yours the way that you wanna do it, that's totally fine. I don't have to paint the back, but I do wanna paint those sides and inside that loop so that it kind of looks a little bit more finished. Don't worry about painting the back because I need to see your name, but let's worry about painting those sides now. So now I am all done with my cartouche. I'm going to leave it on the manila paper. This is going to be our drying kind of area because unfortunately the cartouches will not go on the drying rack, but we can leave it here for today. Just make sure that you're not bumping into it. Maybe you need to move this out of the way so that you can work on another activity without ruining your beautiful cartouche. Now what I want you to do with your paintbrush and your cup when you are done is all you need to do is put the paintbrush inside the cup and leave it in the sink. That is all. Now, for the ice cube trays, you will still have a itty bitty bit of paint in there still ready to use, but we don't need it anymore. Double check and make sure that there's no one else in the room that might need these color paints so I don't have to waste them. But if it is the end of class or you are done with your paint tray, you're just going to turn on the water, turn a little bit lightly, just a very light stream of water. Take the paintbrush, this big one, you'll find it over here at the big sink and you are basically going to use the water and paint your way to a clean tray. So I'm going back and forth. This is the black one. 
and I'm painting it out. So you can see that that one's clear now. Now it's time for the gold. Going back and forth with the paintbrush, cleaning this out. Now many of you might need to do this at the same time. It's important that you are patient when cleaning these out and then you are efficient. You aren't wasting your time at the sinks. You are cleaning. Once it is all squeaky clean, turn off the water. Give it a little bit of a shake to get some of that excess water off the ice tray and then just leave it in the sink and that's all you need to do. With this paintbrush, I will have a cup over here. Just put it back in there so the next person can find it. I am so excited to see what these Egyptian cartouches will look like. I really want to see what kind of colors that y'all are going to choose based on the colors that you like. And I'm so excited to put a string around them and wear them as necklaces. We need to let them dry today, so next time we will add some string. I'm so excited to see what these are going to look like. Have fun, guys.